It's a royal blue institution. It's an exclusive club of the finest Evertonians. It's the greatest night in the Everton calendar. I'm talking about Gladys Street's Hall of Fame. Gladys Street's Hall of Fame means different things to different people. Some Evertonians associate the name with Peter King's grotesque caricatures. Other Evertonians associate the name with intoxicating celebrations which pay tribute to the club's golden history and the men who made it. These annual events provided a previously unknown opportunity for the fans to interact with their heroes. More than anything, all Evertonians should associate Gladys Street's Hall of Fame with the names of its members dating back to the days of St. Domingo and their contributions to the welfare of Merseyside's first club. The Hall of Fame started as a modest concept. Over a decade ago, an independent panel composed of players, journalists, shareholders, season ticket holders, plus a couple of rabid blues, painstakingly assessed the abilities and accomplishments of the candidates during their careers at Everton. David France has now elected to bring down the curtain on the greatest night in the Everton calendar, leaving so many misty-eyed memories. So, who's been inducted into this exclusive club of the finest Evertonians? The members of the Hall of Fame, who number fewer than one per year of the grand old club's illustrious history, are presented now. Alan Ball, a ball of fire with tireless tenacity and stamina. Walter Abbott, a midfield powerhouse known as the Beast of Walton on the Hill. Billy Barber, an uncomplicated England defender and an early exponent of hoofball. Dr. James Baxter put his hands deep into his pockets to fund the exodus to Mere Green. John Bell, an outrageously gifted entertainer who'd been the incandescent beacon of Scottish football. Stan Bentham, a midfield grafter whose unselfish toil was rewarded with a championship medal. Arthur Berry, an amateur international who won two Olympic gold medals for Great Britain. Billy Bingham, a veteran winger respected as a master of football and exalted as the pride of Ulster. Tommy Booth, led by example as an inspiring captain and an intimidating defender. Wally Boys, a skillful winger whose eye-catching pitchcraft helped to capture the league title in 1939. Richard Boyle, a resolute rearguard who captained the club to two English Cup final defeats. Paul Bracewell, a midfield cog in a highly tuned championship winning engine. Frank Brettel, a founding father and member of the original management committee. Cliff Britton, a football virtuoso whose performances were underpinned by a flawless passing technique. Sir Philip Carter, an accomplished chairman in the 80s. Harry Catrick, a shrewd dealmaker and a strict disciplinarian who managed two title-winning teams. Edgar Chadwick, a shining England star who was one of the first household names of Victorian football. Sam Chedzoy, a talented and innovative footballer whose illustrious career spanned World War I. Joe Clennell, a savvy striker who developed into a wartime goal machine. Bobby Collins, a pocket dynamo heralded as the Little General. Billy Cook, a no-nonsense defender whose biting tackles helped to capture silverware in the 30s. Harry Cook, an ex-player who was widely acclaimed as the man with the blue magic sponge. Jackie Coulter, a crowd pleaser with sublime ball skills. Warney Creswell, a calm and confident defender known as the prince of full backs. Ted Critchley, a speedy winger whose accurate crosses were the chief source of ammunition for Dixie Dean. Will Cuff, an unflagging chairman known widely as Mr. Everton, whose iron grip converted the club into a football power.
Dick Sidine, the greatest goal scorer in the history of the game, recently christened the People's Legend. George Dobson, the club's first official professional footballer. John Douglas, a St. Domingo pioneer who featured in the club's first known fixture. Jimmy Dunn, a mercurial forward who was celebrated as one of Scotland's Wembley Wizards. Tommy Eglinton, an explosive winger whose speed of thought matched his speed of foot. Jack Elliott, another ex-player who became a long-serving trainer after the turn of the century. Tom Evans, another enthusiastic amateur who made regular appearances for the club at Stanley Park. George Farmer, a popular pre-league forward who was credited with eight goals in one game. Peter Farrell, a steadfast Evertonian who was Goodison's darling in the post-war era. Wally Fielding, a lovable Cockney who was an expert at unlocking defences. Tom Fleetwood, a versatile footballer who filled several different roles in the title-winning team in 1915. George Fleming scored the club's very first league goal against Accrington in 1888. Bert Freeman, his keen eye for goal, established a league-scoring record in 1909. Jimmy Gabriel, a kilted battler who was totally committed to the Royal Blue Corps. Fred Geary used his electric pace to average more than a goal a game. Charlie G, an unforgiving and unshakable pivot. Albert Gelgard scorched the Goodison turf with his scintillating pace. Tory Gillick simply bamboozled opponents with his magnetic ball control. Andy Gray, a charismatic warrior who earned domestic and European honours in 1985. Andrew Hanna, a soldier of fortune best remembered as the first skipper to lift the league championship trophy. Harold Hardman, a gentleman footballer who represented England at both amateur and full international levels. Brian Harris, an all-round footballer and a dedicated clubman. Val Harris, a popular Irish superstar who seduced Goodison with his courage and toughness. Hunter Hart, Goodison's Lord Nelson with a never-say-die attitude. Colin Harvey, a midfield terrier who displayed immaculate ball control and was celebrated as the White Pele. Adrian Heath was responsible for changing the club's fortunes in the 80s. Dave Hickson, a swashbuckling centre forward known as the Cannonball Kid. Mike Higgins played more pre league games than any amateur or professional player. Johnny Holt feared nationwide the little devil of the English game. Barry Horn, a dog of war who was celebrated as a premiership lifesaver in 1994. John Hurst, a cultured yet underrated defender who was also the club's first ever substitute. Jimmy Husband, an exciting young forward with a passion for long, mazy runs through even the tightest defence. Bobby Irvine, another sublime dribbler and among the most gifted attacking players of his generation. Frank Jeffries, famed for his deft touches and was a key member of the triumphant team of 1915. Tommy Johnson, the productive yet unassuming foil for Dixie Dean. T.E. Jones, respected for his impeccable sportsmanship and sense of fair play. T.G. Jones, a sophisticated centre-half known as the Prince of Wales. Howard Kendall, the player, possessed a textbook tackling technique and was a member of the Holy Trinity. Howard Kendall, the manager, the mastermind 
behind the harvest of silverware in the 1980s. Roger Kenyon, a ruthless defender, feared as the long-haired assassin. Andy King, an enthusiastic terrier with audacious skills. Brian LeBone, respected as the last Corinthian and a royal blue icon. Bob Latchford, a bustling spearhead with natural goal-scoring prowess. Alex Latter, a key component of the club's first championship-winning side in 1891. Tommy Lawton, a world-class centre-forward whose abundance of goals clinched the league title in 1939. Mick Lyons, a devoted Evertonian who'd run through a brick wall for the club. George Marne, simply Blue Moses. Harry Makepeace, a highly respected sportsman capped at both football and cricket. Tom Marriott, an influential pioneer who kept control of the club's purse strings. Jack McGill, instrumental in converting the Sunday school team into a professional football club. Duncan McKenzie, a footballing magician with an eye-catching repertoire. Joe Mercer, an England icon who exemplified the school of science. Alf Millwood, ever present in the first championship winning team in 1891. Sir John Moores, a footballing visionary and benefactor of these so-called Merseyside millionaires. Bob Morris, another original member of the Embryonic Club. John Morrissey, a winger with delicate skills which belied his muscleman physique. Derek Mountfield, a great central defender and an even greater blue nose. Alex Parker, one of the finest Scottish defenders of all time, who was blessed with expert ball winning skills. Bobby Parker, the leading marksman of pre-World War I era. John Willie Parker was Dave Hickson's sidekick, whose sharp finishing made him a second division hero. Fred Pickering, one of the most prolific post-war strikers. Kevin Ratcliffe, a fast and uncompromising defender who was also the club's most successful captain. Peter Reid, the driving force behind the club's success in the 80s, voted PFA Player of the Year in 1985. Jim Richards, yet another founding father and dedicated club servant. Kevin Richardson made unsung contributions throughout the glory years of the 80s. Joe Royal, the youngest ever player who developed into a top-class centre forward. Ted Sager, the safe hands who served the club for 24 years. Alex Scott, an exciting winger who tore down the touchline at breakneck speed. Billy Scott, a custodian who was both brave and agile during the age of physical contact. Jimmy Settle, renowned for his glittering footwork, incisive passing and opportunistic goals. Graham Sharp, an outstanding striker who netted some truly spectacular goals. Jack Sharp, another star of both football and cricket. Kevin Sheedy, a dead ball specialist with a sweet left foot. Neville Southall, Everton's number one who played more games for his club and country than any other. Jack Southworth, a 
most prolific goal scorer of his generation. Jimmy Stein, a consummate professional who provided high quality service to Dixie Dean. Trevor Stephen, a gifted and intelligent member of the successful teams in the 80s. Gary Stevens, a fleet-footed defender who graduated through the club's junior teams to star in the memorable side of the 80s. Alex Stevenson, a dazzling forward who possessed immaculate control. Jack Taylor, a Goodison icon and the first captain to lift the English Cup in 1906. Derek Temple, a Wembley hero who scored arguably the most celebrated goal in the club's history. Jock Thompson, an unselfish team player and a hard-tackling midfielder. Alec Troop, another talented winger who dispatched inch-perfect crosses towards Dixie Dean. Roy Vernon, a clinical finisher with electric acceleration and a venomous shot. Dave Watson, a formidable central defender who was the last Everton captain to lift a piece of silverware. Gordon Watson, a dedicated Evertonian who spent 64 years at Goodison. Gordon West lived up to his label as the most expensive keeper in the world. Tommy White made supersized contributions at the back and up front throughout the 30s. Alan Whittle, a young firecracker whose bag full of goals secured the league title in 1970. Ray Wilson, possibly the finest England fullback and certainly a World Cup winner. Sam Wilsonholm, one of the most polished halfbacks around the turn of the century. Tommy Wright, an unyielding fullback whose tackles and pace were a match for any forward. Sandy Young, a stylish centre forward known for his exhilarating dribbling. Alex Young, Arguably the most graceful footballer of all time, whose genius continues to be celebrated as the golden vision. Clearly, some of these names are more familiar than others, with the final additions to this exclusive club inducted before the final curtain came down in 2009. Bill Kenwright, a blue blood brother with a genuine love for all things Everton, who invested in the club when no one else wanted to. Tony Kay, a magnificent footballer with a sinister tackle who helped secure the title before being harshly punished for his earlier bad judgment. Alfred Wade, turned out for both St. Domingo and Everton in Stanley Park before serving as a club director. Graham Stewart, a diamond geezer for more than one heart-stopping occasion. Reverend Ben Swift Chambers, the Methodist minister at St. Domingo Chapel, who got the football rolling on Merseyside. David Unsworth, a blue rhino who played behind the infamous Dogs of War and pulled the club out of the relegation mire. Duncan Ferguson, the big yin, was a pugilistic talisman and the answer to Gladys Street's prayers. Many great footballers have been inducted yet many fine players have missed out. There are too many to list. Invariably, some fans and former players have disagreed with the selections and even more with the omissions. In fact, Gladys Street's high standards are no better reflected than in the qualifications of the much-loved footballers who've yet to be inducted. A Royal Blue Institution, an exclusive club of the finest Evertonians, 
the greatest night in the Everton calendar. Gladys Street's Hall of Fame. The roots of Everton Football Club run deep into the bedrock of the city of its birth. In fact, the first club on Merseyside boasts an unrivalled history in the top flight of the game, and not surprisingly, has woven a golden thread through the evolution of football. The Hall of Fame embraces the club's unparalleled heritage, which has served to link generations of fans. However, there are legions of men and women who deserve a special mention, the vast majority of whom have never played for the club. They are the generations and generations of Everton fans. After all, the fans are the football club. They're extra special. They always have been, and they always will be.